favorite passages of scripture, John chapter 10. I go to it from time to time because in it I find a tremendous truth that is very valuable for us as Christian disciples of Jesus Christ. As you probably know, Jesus made several I am statements that are recorded for us in the Gospel of John. I am, he said, the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the vine. I am the resurrection and life. I am the way, the truth, and life. Finally, I am the good shepherd. All of these I am statements are recorded for us in the Gospel of John because John wants to portray Jesus as God. He is interested not in the human side of Jesus, but in the divinity of Jesus. So you know that he even begins his Gospel by this tremendous statement of the beginning, the Word was with God. The Word was God. And this Word that was in the beginning, Logos, with God, who was God, became flesh and dwelt among us. Constantly, John makes reference to the divinity of Jesus. All the signs and the miracles that he writes in the, in the Gospel are to point out that Jesus is none other than the very Son of God. So by drawing attention to this phrase, I am, John is actually telling us that Jesus is the same as the I am of the Old Testament. When God revealed himself to Moses, you recall, Moses asked him, what is your name? When I go to Egypt and and I talk to Pharaoh and I tell the people that God has sent me or the, you know, the, 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 the one that who has made you, created you and has plans for you, send me. they will ask me, what is his name? God simply says to Moses, go and tell them that I am has sent you. I am has sent you. And so Jesus, by using this phrase, I am, is equating himself with God. In uh, John, again, chapter 8, in verse 58, we read Jesus responding to the, uh, the Pharisees and the Jews. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Again, it's not grammatically correct, but what Jesus is saying is, I am the same as the one that you heard back in uh, the time when God revealed himself to God's children. I am the good shepherd. Let's just spend a few minutes with that thought. I am the good shepherd. Jesus, as he is declaring this truth about himself, says three things that are very important for us. Tonight, I want us to remember these three things about Jesus, the good shepherd. The first thing is that this good shepherd knows his sheep by name. This good shepherd says he knows his sheep by name. Now, I never knew that sheep had names. Did you know that? I didn't know that. But Jesus, what Jesus is saying is, just as much as a shepherd, a good shepherd, knows his sheep, and he can tell the difference between one and the other, I also know you. I know you by your name. I know you individually. I know you personally. I know you intimately. Remember that verse that we uh, read in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 16. God saying, I have written your name on the palms of of my hands. You and I are so special to God that God has engraved your name on the palm of his hands. Not that he's not going to remember, but I think it is an emphasis that God considers you as important as that. As important as that. God knows you by your name. This is a very unique thing that we need to uh, remember that you and I are called by God by name. Remember the time when 
God called little boy Samuel in the temple. He called him by name, Samuel, Samuel. And he didn't uh, train his ears to, to hear and understand it was God's voice until Eli told him, it is the voice of God that is calling you. God knows you by your name. God made you who you are. God created you the way you are. We called uh, little Levi Jordan the, that name. God already knew that name before mom and dad chose that name. He is God's child. You and I are God's children. God has shaped us. God has uniquely designed us. Go back to Psalm 139 and read it again if you don't believe. See how the, the, the words of the psalmist are so clear that God has shaped you and me the way we are. And the reason why God does that is because God has a plan in your life. God has a plan for every single one of us. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your educational level is. It doesn't matter what your social status is. God doesn't care for all of that. God says, I made you. I have a plan for you. And I want to fulfill that plan if you are willing to entrust your life into my hands. If you have never really believed that, I want you to take some time to think about it. You are not an accident. You are not here by some kind of uh, coincidence. You are here because God's hand is upon you. God's hand is at work in your life. God wants to have a personal relationship with you. In verse 14, Jesus again repeats, I am the good shepherd and I know my own. Jesus knows you better than you know yourself. Isn't that wonderful? He knows you by your name. The second thing I want us to remember from this passage is that Jesus is saying, I, as the good shepherd, will lead you. I know you because I made you. And the second thing Jesus is saying is, I am going to lead you. Every single step of your life, Jesus is saying, I will walk with you step by step. If you follow me, I will take you where you need to go. If you want to know what God's plan is for your life, you need to follow Jesus because Jesus is going to lead you to where you can find and discover God's plan for your life. He says, the good shepherd goes in front and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Do you know the voice of the shepherd? Can you recognize when God calls you by your name? Do you recognize the voice of God? Do you recognize Jesus when he calls you by your name and he says, come and follow me? When he met Matthew, he said, Matthew, I want you to come and follow me. He left the table where he was collecting taxes and he followed Jesus. When he came to that tree in Jericho, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down. I want you to follow me. You and I are called to follow. Jesus wants to lead us. You know, the, 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 the nice thing about following Jesus is when you follow Jesus, there's really nothing for you to worry about. Uh, am I correct? If you're following Jesus, there's nothing for you to worry about. We worry about a lot of things. Jesus knew that. In Sermon on the Mount, he makes a lot of references to how we worry and we become anxious about what we are going to eat and what we are going to wear and uh, how our life is going to be. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. You know, this year, 2018, marks my 50th year of following the Lord. 50 years. May 26th, 1968 is when I decided to follow Jesus. 
I remember it like it happened yesterday because it is so clear in my mind. When I heard the voice of God and, and the, the voice of Jesus saying to me, my son, I want you to give your life to me. I want you to follow me. I was just 15 years old. Now you can do the math, 15 plus 15, you know. God has been good all the days of my life. He called by my name and he said, take my lead. I'm going to lead you. Don't become anxious about anything at 15, you know. I mean, your whole life is in, in front of you. You, you. you have all kinds of dreams and you want to do this, you want to do that. I was just finishing high school at that time, 1969 I finished my high school and I was going into college. All the dreams, all the hopes, all the aspirations of a teenager looking forward to life. Yet when I put my life in God's hands, I didn't have any questions. I knew very clearly in my mind at that time that I was going to follow Jesus wherever he would lead me. God has a plan for you. It doesn't matter if you've missed it. God has a plan for you even this day. And God says, I want you to trust me. I want you to put your life in my hands and I will bless you. And I will guide your steps. That is why the psalmist says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Doesn't matter what circumstances may bring in your life. Doesn't matter. You know, every day something or the other happens and I'm like perturbed for a, for a moment. Oh my gosh, what is happening in my life? What is happening to me? Just for a moment because we are all humans. But then the deep assurance takes over. The deep assurance takes over and says, my child, you're mine. Nothing will happen to you that I have not willed for you. Nothing is going to shake you as long as my hand is on you. No force on earth or heaven can even move you an inch because I'm watching over you. I'm watching over you. Where does the shepherd lead us? We go to Psalm 23. You remember that Psalm that you learned in Sunday school? The Lord is my shepherd. I didn't hear you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And you know, if you learn that one verse, and if you make that the mantra of your life, you'll be okay. Believe me, you'll be okay. You will not worry about your food. You will not worry about your job. You will not worry about your clothes. Many times I've repeated this. When we first came to this country, and Nagesh talked a little bit about that, when we all came to this country, we didn't come with a bundle of money in our suitcases, did we? No. We didn't have anything except the faith that God was with us. When we stepped into this country, in, on, onto this land, we knew one thing for sure, that it was God who led us and that, and that God will never let us down. For almost 40 years in this country, I have known the goodness and the faithfulness of Almighty God. I praise God for that. God leads us, the good shepherd leads us to still waters. David says, he leads me beside still waters. He leads me to green pastures. He knows where the good stuff is in life. Very often we think, oh, Wall Street has the good stuff in life. Or Broadway has the good stuff in life. Or something else has the good stuff in life. My friends, the devil has all kinds of ways to attract you and me away from the leading of the Lord. Are you hearing me? There is such strong temptation to follow other than where the shepherd wants to lead us. Because we think that is what I want. That is what looks very nice. Yes, for a little while God allows you to do that. 
That's why the sheep get lost, right? The sheep supposed to hear the voice of the shepherd, right? Follow the voice of the shepherd. Sometimes the sheep says, ah, let 99 go, I'm going to go this way. What happens? You're lost. That's what happens. You get into depression. That's what happens. You get frustrated with life. That's what happens. You get overwhelmed with problems. That's what happens. The devil will take you for a little journey on the side, but then very soon you will discover that that's the wrong path. And you cry out to God. Like Simon Peter cried out, save me, O Lord, save me. And Jesus gives you his hand and he pulls you out. I like the psalmist when he says, your rod and your staff will comfort me. Your rod and your staff. I like the part, the staff, because the staff has a, has a crooked end at one side and that is intended to pull the sheep out of the, the mess, wherever that sheep is. The Lord is always there by your side to pull you back on track. He will leave the 99 safely in the sheepfold and he will come after you because he knows you by name. He will not leave you in the middle. He will not say, oh, that man or that woman or that boy or that girl I have warned them so many times and yet they go after their own way I'm not going to do anything no 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 your mother may say that your father may say that your brother or your friend may say that but God never will abandon you never will God abandon you he will come seeking you his love will not let you go down I am always with you. The third thing, very important, God says, I will watch over you. I will protect you. I will keep you. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about Monday. Don't worry about any day. Because God is with you. What more can you ask? What more can you want? He who created this, this universe, he who made everything that is, God can snap his finger and turn the world upside down in a second. Do you believe that? He's almighty, he's sovereign. Don't go after things that do not have a lasting impact. God alone does that. God watches over you. God wants to protect you. That's why he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Jesus says again, repeats the word, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Not like the hireling. A hired hand will watch over you for a little bit, but when his life is at stake, he's going to run away. Now you hear a lot about flipping and this and that today in the news. You know, oh, this is what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. He's going to abandon. He's going to leave. You know what? Don't you ever trust another human. Trust in God. Trust in God. Make God your main stay of your life. May he be the anchor of your life. Don't bank on people because people cannot be trusted. Mark my words. Everybody might abandon you. Remember how many people abandoned Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? How many? One, two, three? Every one of them ran for their lives. But God will never. In fact, Jesus says, a hired hand will run away at danger. When danger knocks on the door, the hired hand runs away. But Jesus does not run away to save his life. In fact, he came to give his life for 
you and for me. He gave his life. He is that sheep that was slaughtered on that night when the children of Israel left Egypt. And that blood of the lamb that was smeared on the doorpost is what saved them. And the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that was shed on that cross is what will save you. Because he has already put his life down. The worst that the enemy can do is destroy your soul. That's the worst. Not the body, but the soul. But take heart, my brother, my sister, Jesus has already taken care of that problem when he said, I am going to cover you with my blood. You are covered. Your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit is all covered by the blood of the Lamb. He is the good shepherd who saves you from every calamity and danger. So he knows you. Rest in that. Be at peace that God brought you here for a while. God has given a purpose for your life. Enjoy that. Follow his lead wherever he leads you. Don't be afraid of anything, but trust in him and put your hand in his hand and walk with him all the days of your life. And should you go astray for any reason, don't you despair because the one who knows you, the one who has called you, the one who is leading you will always be there to rescue you he who has given his very life to save you will not just let you be. He will come by your side. He will walk with you. He will be a blessing in your life. But what does he want in return? All he wants in return is for you to say thank you. Just be grateful to God. Live your life in a response of gratitude and thanksgiving to God. Make your life a means of blessing, an oblation, a, a, a way of blessing other people. Be a blessing wherever God will take you and use you. Be a blessing for somebody else and therefore glorify Almighty God. The Good Shepherd loves you. Let us pray. We offer you praise and thanks for coming into this world, for taking our form, flesh and blood. And thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for knowing us. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for watching over us. Lord, we are your sheep. You are our shepherd. So bless us and so use us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.